Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. Never not be afraid. Have you seen the kids' movie, The Crudes? The Croods, it came out, oh my gosh, Tyson was little. I don't even think our youngest boy, Kai, was born yet. So it probably came out around maybe 2012, 13, kind of something like that, maybe 2014. Um, Great movie, by the way. Great, great kids movie. But the beginning of the movie kind of starts with, if you haven't seen it, where they talk about how basically in the movie, all the, the, you know, the cave people have been annihilated except for the crudes. And so what the dad has also has actually found is that because all these other things, so whether it's been, you know, other animals or the plague came in or whatever, all these different things that killed off everybody except the crudes. It's kind of like they're like the last living family. Now they do meet somebody else along the way in the movie, but what the dad dispels to them is this motto, which is never not be afraid. They don't go out after dark. They don't, you know, do certain things. They don't leave a certain area of where their cave is and outside of their cave. And so, and he tells these stories, which kind of continues to keep them in a place of fear, to keep them safe. And what dawned on me today when I was reflecting on fear, because I've seen the movie before like a bunch of times, and then we watched it the other night, the boys and I, and I was like, oh shit, he's ego. Like the dad <laughs> represents the ego part of us, which is, which is the fear, which is the mind, which is also referred to as the small self that wants you to stay in fear. It is in a protection mode. Now, it is a piece of who we are that I don't think will ever completely go away. Like you want to have it, right, for certain times. So, for example, if you were in, you know, I don't know, you're walking down a dark alley in some strange looking dude or whatever comes up to you and, you know, you need to have that kind of that fight or flight response that, oh shit, I'm in danger, like I got to get the heck out of here, right? When it's warranted. The challenge is just like being in that fight or flight, which is the sympathetic part of our nervous system, which is the stress response is only designed to be in the body for a short period of time for short situations. We get out of danger and it's like, ah, then our body goes back to that more of that relaxed state of our nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. But as you probably are aware of, most people in today's world spend the majority of their time in the sympathetic nervous system as if everything is a stress, (coughs) excuse me, as, as if everything needs to be feared and questioned and talked about, and I better not do that thing. And really what that is, is that is the ego portion out of us that has grown out of control and is now running the show. And is now running the show. We used to have this funny saying when we had our practice together, which is, um, you know, we had to, in our chiropractic practice, have certain you know, kind of rules and standards of procedure with our staff. And certainly uh, rules aren't the best thing. Agreements that we have with our patients, right? If they miss an appointment, um, you know, what's kind of expected of them in the agreement. They know what's what they can expect of us. They, we kind of, you know, we create these agreements together. We actually had like new patient agreements. This is when the hours are, you know, I agree to be on time. Uh, we agree to be on time. Um, gosh, what else were in those? You know, I I don't know, whatever else we're in those. And they were just kind of like a, hey, we all kind of know what to expect from each other, right? So it's cool. Because what happens in a lot of any kind of relationship when there's misunderstandings, this is where the challenge is. So we were like, well, let's kind of get that out of the way, right? And have these in place. I had a story. Oh, so, okay. So what we would say at times is like, um, if it was maybe like somehow we were getting like a little bit slack about them. We weren't like militant. I mean, listen, if somebody missed an appointment, like, oh my God, things got out of control with work. We didn't go like, oh, doesn't matter. Here's a missed appointment fee. Pay it. Right? Like it was like, of course we gave people grace at times. Like it was okay. Right? But what we found is if we got really slack about that, or even with like team that we had at the time, and we would say, oh my God, the inmates are running the asylum. Right? (laughs) Like 
The inmates are running the asylum like it's become crazy town. We got to like, we got to, we got to, we got to come in here and clean this up and get really clear on these agreements again. And so when you have ego that is really running the majority of your life, it's like the inmate is running the asylum. It is fucking crazy town. And ego, the small self is going to share with you all sorts of fearful lies, which are bullshit about what things mean. Ego wants you to separate. It doesn't want you to connect with any other human being, which is a lie. It'll tell you stories of how you are alone and nobody understands you and nobody is like you and it's better just to stay away from other people and these people did that and it's going to introduce the concepts of blame and shame and guilt and anger and all that stuff and create all sorts of stories about it. None of them that are true, but... The ego is doing its job, if you will, of like, wait a second, there's danger, Will Robinson. We got to play it small. Like, don't you freaking put yourself out there. Just like, stay here. Just like the dad and the crew, just stay in the cave. Maybe you can go out a little bit, but no. And then it's like, never not be afraid. So what do we do with that, right? What do we do when we have those feelings of fear or panic or terror? And some that can be very warranted depending on the situation in your life, right? We're like, of course, I'm going to feel these things. Of course, you should allow yourself to feel it. You don't squash it and just go, nope, that's ego. That's, you know, often referred to spiritual bypassing. Like you're not really dealing with what's in front of you. There's something that's in front of you right now to gain a lesson, to get something that you need to hear, that you need to experience. And you don't necessarily have to know the reason why at the time. But it's there for you. It's there for you. And, you know, the lesson could be something as simple as like, listen, you just need to face this. Because you do. If you keep running from these things, you keep listening to ego, you keep buying into the story. You know, it's like getting bad advice from a friend that like really has no, no, you know. I mean, I see people who are starting out with like businesses, whether it's like an MLM or some kind of small business or something online. And they're asking everybody and their dog for their opinion and their feedback. And the thing is, is that, With love to these people who I think and hope actually mean well giving their feedback, most of their feedback is not even valid because they don't have a business and they're not doing what they're doing and they haven't put themselves out there. And it's easy to make comments from the cheap seats, right? You know, people watch sporting events and be like, oh, that sucked. It's like, have you, have you, like, I can understand it's your team or like whatever, you get all caught up in this stuff, but like, it's irrelevant, You don't see the players going, oh my God, that fan told me I'd made the wrong play. Maybe they're right. I shouldn't like, I shouldn't sleep tonight. I should worry about it. No, they're like, that's not relevant. You're not my coach. You're not my teammates. Like you're not part of the team that knows this world. Right. And so understand that ego doesn't want you to play in the world where you quote, might get hurt, where you might fail, where you might fall down, where you might make a mistake. It's like, you know, a lot of parents now, I shouldn't say a lot of parents, that's not fair. Some parents who out of love want to protect their child from all the hurt and all the the pain that they could possibly ensue. Again, out of the deepest love of, I don't want my child to get hurt. But the challenge is, and I think anybody knows this, even these parents as well, kind of know like, well, that's kind of what makes you who you are, right? It is part of life to experience these things. So when that fear comes up, you can feel that. But then you let it move on through and recognize that most of the time, majority of the time, these these fears, you've probably seen some of the acronyms, right? Fear, false evidence appearing real. Uh, What's another one I've seen? That's the biggest one. False evidence appearing real. Yeah, yeah. The false self, the small self, ego, mind. It's not real. It's not real. And it's like, just like in the movie The Croods, when they realized that they started to face all these things, and man, there was such, at the end of the movie, like, there's such a beautiful world out there. There was so much more to learn. There is not really anything. There's nothing to gain by playing small. We were given this life, which is such a gift, right? There are some people who have lost their loved ones very swiftly, very quickly, You know, some children that died very early, some that never made it through, some that would love to have the chance to have breath in their body again, 
or to be able to interact with that loved one. We have that chance. We don't need to look back on things that happened as mistakes and failures, and that's all the way that we can see it. By the way, those are stories that are led by ego. Or we can know that all these things brought us to where that we are. And we are capable of moving through hard things. But the reality is, is most of the time, the story that we create about what we think it means or doesn't mean, or what that person said or didn't say, or what the words, you know, what it meant or didn't like, you know, that stuff could just go on forever. It's exhausting. This is not the way your life was designed to live. It's the way that a lot of people do live their life. So I understand how it's easy to kind of go, well, this is the way it is, right? And that is ego, by the way saying this is the way it is. Your life was meant to be live with all of those pieces. Yeah, the fear too, but for you to recognize what's real and what's not. Never not be afraid. No, there's going to be times when valid that fear is valid or there's some scary things that you're moving through, but the only way to go through it is to go through it. So here's your more tip for today. What is a primary story that you hear your ego, your false self, the small self is telling you. What is or what Eckhart Tolle refers to as the voices in the head? What is the voice in your head telling you? I'm not enough. Don't do that thing. I'm a piece of shit. Nobody will ever love me. Um, I made all these mistakes. I'm a bad person. Like I'm a failure. Like what is it? What is the primary story? And then I want you to write this down in your journal. And then here's the second part, part of this. I want you to, to, to flip it. So here's what I mean. I want you to affirm it the positive, okay? Now, this isn't something where it's like, oh, I'll just do that. And then I won't feel it anymore. No, but this is something for you to just see it differently. So let's, let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, if you go, well, I set up this business thing and it, it didn't, it totally flopped. So I failed, Okay. Now, you could also see it in a different way, right? You could also see that and say, you know what? I am proud of me going after my dream. I'm proud that I did the thing that most people would never do. I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned in that experience. Like, what is the way for you to flip that to see? Because until we start to examine some of these things, and still we start, until we begin and choose, choose, choose to see it in a different way, we pan back and we see the bigger picture. We will just stay stuck in that place of where we are. Never not be afraid. And the thing is, is that when you choose to remain in that place of fear in one or honestly, if you haven't one area of your life, it's going to bleed into every part of your life at some point. It is not just affecting you, sister, brother, it is affecting everybody you impact. Your partner, your children, your friends, your family, your business, you know, partner, employees, like, you know, the person at the post office, like everybody, your health, you your energy, you, your ability to love yourself or not, you. I keep saying that to you because you matter the most in this equation. And you matter the most to all those other people as well too. And it is up to you to choose to start seeing this in a different light. So that's your more tip. You're gonna, what is the, the biggest kind of story that your ego is telling you? And then what's a way to really affirm that in the positive and just take a look at them. That's all you need to do. This is not like, a, oh, I did that thing and now I'm done. No, it's the beginning. These are small things you can do, right? When I coach women, of course, it's a much different level. I'm speaking to you in your earpods, your AirPods right now, your earbuds in your car, walking your dog at the gym, some way in your vehicle, like, and that's cool. And thank you for bringing me into your life and into your day. It is a fucking honor. I truly mean that, sister. But it's the beginning little pieces, right? It's the beginning little pieces. It's the beginning of it. And for you, if you've been hearing this message, whether this is your first podcast 
or you've been listening for years, because the podcast has been out now for almost four years. Isn't that amazing? It'll be in August 2019. It'll be four years. Over 3 million downloads of this podcast. Like, unbelievable. So grateful for that. But you may be at this point where you're like, you know what? I'm at this crisis in my point, uh, crisis in my life right now. I'm at this crossroads like, oh my God, things are falling apart or things have broken down or I don't know what to do or I feel like I'm stuck and I'm ready to invest in me. I'm ready to really move through this. I'm ready to learn the tools about this. And so for this summer, there were three one-on-one coaching spots to work with me exclusively where you literally, and I mean this, you literally have me 24-7 for three months in the summer, June, July, August. So of those three spots, one got filled this week, and this is by application only. Women that are like, I'm ready to invest in myself, time, energy, money. Like, I just don't want to stay in this fear place anymore. I don't want to stay in this stuck place. I don't want to be like the death in the crowds of never not be afraid and play small when I'm feeling a call to something different. So if that is you, sister, here's what I want you to do. Email me, drkarenosburn at gmail.com. So it's D-R-K-A-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com. I will send you the application because yes, this is by application and we will start the process from there. So drkarenosburn at gmail.com. So I will talk to the next episode, sister. A life of more is one step away from you really facing what ego is telling you and to, how, how do I say this? Not never be afraid every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.